And I sat down recently with cyclist Lance Armstrong, and we discussed his use of performance-enhancing drugs during his seven-time winning streak of the Tour de France. He now admits he did it, and he's been stripped of all of his titles. And we're going to learn the science behind how and why all that went down. So let's do this. Joining us in studio to help us in this conversation is Arthur Kaplan, professor of bioethics at NYU. Arthur, welcome to Star Thanks College. for having me. Thanks for being here. So that's a thing, bioethics. It is a thing. It uh, wasn't always a thing. No, uh, until we figured out a way to get paid for being philosophers, it was nothing. But now, <laughs> now it's okay. become something. Yeah, because it's deep thinking about how things are and how they should be. Correct. Yeah, th there it is. So let's get back to my interview with Lance Armstrong and where we talk about these topics that are right in your bailiwick. Let's check it out. How much would you say your performance was enhanced as a percent of yourself? From when you were at your peak response to these right. chemicals. Well, so these, you, the problem was in cycling, you had, you always had some of that. And I break it up into two categories, low octane and high octane. And you've always had, and maybe still have, some low octane. So these one, two percenters. And then came... Low octane enhancements. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. And one or two percent, if you're world class and you just have to beat the one person, that'll do it. Right. But, they, but assuming that everybody opts in for low octane, mm -hmm. right? Which they did in the old days. But then what happened is somebody came along, big pharma, right? Came along with something that was high octane. And that was EPO, and that was not one or two percent. That was ten percent, and so it was so great. EPO, uh, urethropoietin. So okay. the, the 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 red cell booster, which you know, again, power, okay. weight, oxygen, right? How you get that power is. Uh -huh. So you had this, the sport, the not not even cycling, but the entire endurance world. They discovered it, and it was so beneficial to the ones that 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 made that, it, it, it spread like wildfire. And then everybody's faced with this, uh, this quandary, like, oh my God, like what, one or two percent, you, you can almost manage that. You could say, you know what, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna do that and I, and, and I can still compete. 10 percent? Then you're faced with the decision, do I opt in or do I go home? Arthur, was that the only real option, to use illegal enhancements or just go home? Well, it might have been true that if everybody's doing it, you got to do it to compete. But I think the Bicycle Association, whatever the professional group is that monitors the races and the sports, they let this go for a long time, a little bit like Major League Baseball, not doing anything about steroids. You know, you're going to tolerate it in the interest of keeping the fans around to pay attention. I think the officials, if you will, made a mistake with uh, EPO. So when he says low octane, what are the drugs he's talking about? So you could have low octane cortisone shots. Some of us get them. <laughs> Me, for my beat up football knee, it's a kind of pain reliever and a little bit of a lubricant in the joints. Obviously for bicycling, kind of a low tech intervention, drugs around, you might say I got a sore knee, get it anyway. Little higher powered stuff, steroids, builds up muscle strength. The full-blown 10% high-octane stuff he was talking about, that was a drug that was invented. Is that the EPO that That's we the were EPO, about? and that really is a hormone that lets the body make red blood cells. You have more red blood cells, you have more ability to process oxygen. Scott, are there performance-enhancing drugs for comedians? Parental disappointment? <laughs> <laughs> Same as ventriloquists. <laughs> would you have one? What would be your performance-enhancing drug? The universe itself is a drug. Wow, man, you blew my mind. <laughs> I think my body chemistry changes when I ascend a mountain and I look up into the night sky, alone, communing with the cosmos. I am a different person. Something biochemically changes within me. Do you want to be alone with the universe right now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be, if I could be there 24 seven, I would. Okay, so let's get to brass tacks here. Why is any of this illegal. Why is it wrong? You're a bioethicist. 
Why is it wrong? I just, I, I, <laughs> I have no idea. No, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, it says well, the bio. <laughs> yes, it's wrong for a couple of reasons. But let me preface that before I reveal the secret reasons. There's no absolutes. We make up the rules of our sport. This is my point. If we want to have the drug-addled, completely overdosed Olympics, we can. But most people, and you started out the show uh, talking about this, why do we care about what athletes do? We want to see what the humans do. We're not really interested in who has the best pharmacist. So if you're interested in human competition, you got to set some limits. Otherwise, it just doesn't matter. It's who gets the best drugs, and that's what you're watching. It's an exhibition. Yeah, but why not just have everybody do it, and that raises the level of the sport. You drink coffee in the morning. You're now more awake to do your sport. Mm Mm-hmm. And Coffee's not illegal, yet you are enhanced. You slept last night. That made a proper chemistry for you to wake up and be and be alert for all the things you need. That's you are, not you illegal. You are going for the A in the bioethics class. I can see that. Right <laughs> so, but here's the rejoinder. One, if you do things that are risky, it's not tolerable in athletics. You take those steroids, they damage your liver, they cause all kinds of health problems. Two, kids watch what the grown-ups do, they start taking the drugs. We saw steroids ramp. You're saying, wait, hold on. You're, I'm, still, I'm going now going yeah, yeah. for the A+. Plus. You're saying <laughs> that, you're implying that if all of these performance-enhancing drugs did not otherwise damage your health, yes. nobody would have a problem with that. They probably wouldn't. Ooh, and well, the other problem with performance-enhancing drugs, and this is an odd one, but if you care about continuity over time comparing performances, you can see sports like baseball get very nervous about introducing new drugs because they like to say, is Babe Ruth better than Willie Mays, who's better than, you know, Rodriguez? Oh, he doped. Do we put him in the... In New York, we call him A-Rod. Yeah, Yeah, A-Rod. Okay. Okay. I'm from Boston, we call him a jerk. But anyway... um, (laughs) But anyway... So where do you draw the line? I think you have to do it in a couple of ways. One, watch the health risk. Two, if it gives you an enormous advantage, it's simply gonna undermine competition, and that's really what we're paying attention to. Three, if you have some kind of an agreement, you gotta make it available to everybody. You know, if our Olympic team goes and beats up poor nations because we have nutrition and trainers and a good exercise physiologist and on and on, I don't consider that fair. I wanna see something balanced out there. And none of that is illegal. And none of that is illegal. So again, I'm not saying there's an in-principle reason to say, no, you can't do X. You do want to pay attention to health impact. No doubt about that. We don't want people getting brain tumors because they're using growth hormone. Bad idea. But, you know, are we going to allow trainers better diets? Yeah, I think that does become part of the sport. And we decide how much of that we can tolerate before it becomes an exhibition of pharmaceuticals, not an exhibition of athletics. So uh, this splits it into two regimes. One of them is, am I better than you at any given time? Yes. And another one is, I'm trying to create a world record. So am I better than all humans who have come before me? And people are interested in both. Some want to see, gee, I wonder what you could do if you artificially engineered somebody to have prosthetic legs and some kind of gigantic the genetic six million dollar man. muscles. Yes. Okay, could they, could they jump like over Mount Everest? That would be cool. We'd like to see that on TV. Others would say, you know, uh, that's not a sport. That's become some kind of bizarre exhibition. If you like that, watch uh, pro wrestling. That's what that is. That's some kind of an exhibition. It's not a contest. Mm. I want to see what humans can do if they train, if they work, if they struggle. That's sports. So I'm not saying which one you ought to be a fan of. I'm just saying, you know, that's where the line goes. 